Let's go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that you would just help us, Lord, today. Lord, to just have your word penetrate our hearts. Keep, Lord, the enemy away who would snag away your word. Lord, let our hearts be fertile ground to receive your word in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you help the people that are out there, Lord, that are feeling distress during this time. Lord, I ask that you be with them, comfort them, touch their lives, and encourage them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I don't know about you, but I could always use a little encouragement. Yeah. And I want you to know that those of you who are here physically today, I love you guys, and I know Donna Silla would be here if you could, and I know that there's many people who would be here if they could. But for those that have joined us, you encourage us. There's nothing like sitting at the church, and it's a half hour till church, and you're thinking like, okay, is it just going to be us today? I know it's online that we're reaching out to people, but it is so good to have people physically down because, you know, uh, 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 what, what are you doing? Just so I can see it, oh, too. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> just just go ahead and put it to where you can see it, too. Just let me know if, if I do this. Yeah, because I, I, I don't want to be, hey, how are you all doing today? So glad that you can you see my smile. No. No, i got to stay back here. Stay in my place. But uh, it is an encouragement. And I could give a virtual hug. And if you would, please go ahead and, and go up to your TV screen or grab your cell phone or grab your computer and, and reach up and, and, and give it a hug. See? <laughs> And, and say, okay, we're giving. That's not the same, you know, as being able to greet somebody. You can't taste the cookies that we have here today. You can turn me down just a little bit because it's, it's wine. It's beaten back. You can't taste the cookies that we got today. You can't taste that A and W root beer that's sitting over there on the table. Nope. So I, I know. Well, you can't taste the coffee I'm drinking at home. Yes, I, I get it. Enough of that. I'm not harping on anything. It is 11.02 and we're starting out. Today we, we are going to continue in our series of those that seek the Lord find purpose. It's those that seek the Lord find things. The benefits to those who seek the Lord. We have talked about how that those who seek the Lord find comfort. Those who seek the Lord find destiny. Those who seek the Lord find assurance. Those who seek the Lord can find salvation. Those who seek the Lord find healing. Those who seek the Lord... Find confidence. They find faith. They find hope. They find fellowship. They find purpose in their life. And I want to talk to you today a little bit about finding purpose in your life. And I'm going to ask a few questions, and I'm going to meddle a little bit if, that, if that's okay. As a pastor, I would rather have a pastor that meddled in my life a little bit the one who got up every Sunday, oh, we, we could fill this church if I put if I put a big sign, come to church today, and we're going to give you a $20 gas card. Well, that doesn't mean a half a tank, so we'd have to make it a $40 gas. Come today to church, and we're going to give you, for the first 20 people here, we're going to give you a $40 gas card. People will come to church. Yeah. You know? The, come today, and we're going to give you Dunkin' Donut gift cards. No, that's Father's Day and Mother's Day. Did we school miss supplies. Father's Day? School supplies. School, come today and we're going to get you school supplies. Yes. Uh, there, there's so many things that we could do to draw people in. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Come today and I'm going to share the Word of God. Amen. And hopefully something I say is going to get into your life and it's going to help you. Amen. I showed a picture this morning on Facebook and I shared it to her on Facebook. And it was some pancakes. And boy, were they good. They are called cinnamon bun pancakes so they make a big batch of sand pancakes and then they put like the melty hot stuff and they swirl it so there's a swirl pattern on it and they put cinnamon sugar and walnuts on it and a big old thing of you know like the glazing thing oh it's good i made the picture 3d so you can move your phone around and kind of look look at that and i my my title of that was church is better than cinnamon bun pancakes because cinnamon bun pancakes, well, 
You eat that and it's good. I couldn't even finish all those pancakes. I ran out of room. And it was only two pancakes. They were pretty good, pan pretty good sized pancakes, but they were so rich and so good. And it, 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 was, it was enjoyable, but you know what? It's gone. It was gone the next day. Well, not all of it. <laughs> There's a, a little stay behind. But the Word of God, when you come to church, it's a seed in your life. And when you get that, that word seed into your heart, it can bring change in your life that is eternal. Sometimes when people get the change of God's word, it can change their life here completely. I'm talking here on this side of heaven. Oh, the word of God can change eternity for you drastically. You go into one of two places. And I'm going to talk a little bit today about purpose in your life. So the best way to do that is first I'm going to share a little bit about some people whose lives were turned upside down because they started to follow after what God had for their lives. Some of these people that I'm going to talk about, they had good careers. They had really good careers. Most of them were pretty good in their profession. Some of them had received training. Some of them even went to school to learn the things. And these are all people right out of the Bible. The first one that we want to look at, well, it's Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was somebody whose life was turned around. The Apostle Paul, as he said, he was a, a, a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He studied under one of the most notable teachers of his time. He was as religious as religious could be and followed the law as, as much as he could. He was a Roman citizen and a citizen of Israel. He was Jewish. He knew the law and he was, was really dedicated to the law. And he knew the religion that the Jewish people followed so much that when this group of people came along who were following Jesus, he thought that it was heresy and that they should all be thrown into jail and that this, this religious movement should be stomped out. Even though we have record that his very teacher said that, you know, we should just leave them alone. Because if it's of God, then we're going to find ourselves fighting against God. And if it's not of God, well, then it'll fizzle out. Mm -hmm. So just let them alone. But Paul, instead, he got letters. And he got letters because he was going to go and he was going to arrest these followers of Jesus. Matter of fact, the apostle Paul, who was known as Saul at that time, is recorded in the book of Acts that when they heard the words of Stephen in the Bible, as Stephen told them about Jesus, it says the people gnashed on him with their teeth, that they were, they were gritting at their teeth, and they took Stephen outside of town, and they all picked up rocks, and they began to throw the rocks at Stephen, one of the earlier followers of Jesus, until he died. But it said that this guy, Saul, was holding everybody's coats. Come on out. Don't worry about your coats. I'll take care of your clothes so that you can fling the rocks better. This is, this is who he was. Uh -huh. And then he met Jesus himself yeah. on the road to Damascus. And he had a life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. And God changed him from Saul, the persecutor, to Paul, the apostle, mm -hmm. who spent the rest of his life preaching, teaching, promoting mm -hmm. the very religion that he was against. He had a new purpose in his life. Mm -hmm. 
Peter, a fisherman, on the Sea of Galilee, up and about the north, the north northern side, a little bit to the west, is where Peter fished, and he was from a town where where probably there wasn't a whole lot of Jewish people in the town that he was at, but he was an accomplished fisherman, and that's how he made his money with his brother Andrew, Peter, and Andrew. As you go through the, the 12 disciples, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, and you go through all the disciples, Peter and Andrew were brothers. And James and John were brothers. And those two guys, those four guys were people who fished. Now they fished. When you say fishermen, I'm not talking about somebody going out with a rod and reel and say, I'm a fisherman. You know? No, they were the guys who were dropping down nets. And they would go out and they would just drop out all the nets and then they'd have to pull all the nets in and then they'd have to bring them in the boat and they'd have to go out and they'd have to sell them in the market and that's how he made his living. He actually went to a town, Capernaum, where he could go and be even a better marketeer for fishing. It's like a business town. So he wasn't somebody catching a little bit of fish, but this was guy was a professional person who caught fish. And one day, Jesus came walking by and said, put down your net. You're a fisherman, but I'm now going to make you a fisher of men. And he put down his net, him and his brother, and he left. And he started to follow Jesus. And God gave Peter an entirely new purpose in life. Amen. To go out and to share God's word. It was Peter who went into the temple, who began to preach. It was Peter who the guy looked up to him and said, oh, give me some money. There was, a, there was like, a, like, like what we have today. Except for instead of walking between the cars with little signs that says homeless and help, this guy looked at them and, 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 and he was just asking for some money at the temple where all the church people were going, the religious people going in. And Peter looked at him and the guy said, oh, he's paying attention to me. He's about to give me something. And Peter talked to him and said, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have is Jesus. And you may be sitting there and you can't walk and, and, and your legs aren't working, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And that man stood to his feet. And he didn't have to sit there. He wasn't begging just because he could make a living doing that. He was begging because his legs didn't work. So he hobbled to the temple just to try to get some money so he could have food every day. And Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I give in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Praise God. And Peter's fame went all over. Matter of fact, we have in the book of Acts, second chapter where the apostle Peter preached what's known as the first gospel sermon. And he preached it in town. And it said that after he preached it, that 3,000 people were added to the church that day. Yeah. Right. Imagine your church grows by 3,000 people from one service. Yeah. Instant mega church. Uh -huh. That's Great Peter, services. whose life was changed. <laughs> His purpose in life shifted from being somebody who fished to somebody who was reaching the lost for Christ. Yeah. He had a new purpose in life. Amen. David. David in the Bible. What do we know about David? Before, before Samuel came, David was a shepherd. He had a lot of older brothers. He did the scroungiest job that you could do. He raised the sheep. Did you know the shepherds in the Bible, they were looked down upon? That that was like that was not a job that, that people said, Oh, when I grow up, I want to be a shepherd. 
That was not what the little kids said. No, it's like, okay, we're all the older brothers. We have already done our chores and our stuff. Now it's your turn. I'll be glad when you're old enough to sit out there and you can go sit out outside and take care of those dirty sheep. And this, this was what David's calling was is to be a shepherd. But you know what he did? He did something different. He didn't just sit out there and watch the sheep. See, a lazy shepherd, that wasn't a good thing. But he sat out there and he played music. And he played music to the Lord. And he worshiped God. And he took his time out there to spend time with God. And he had a little slingshot. And he probably practiced a lot with the slingshot. Have you ever, have you ever tried to shoot a slingshot? Yeah. Okay. If you've watched our live devotion, you know we had this thing with squirrels dropping stuff all over it. So I went on Amazon and I bought a slingshot. And I put a little piece of stick in there, nothing hard, but you know, enough that I could shoot at the squirrels and scare them, and scare them off. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, I wouldn't want to kill the squirrels because I always had a rule. You can, you can shoot whatever you want, you gotta eat but what's the rule? You got to eat it. So you want to BB gun and go shoot some, some lizards? Guess what you have for dinner? You know, can't, well, I want to shoot some lizards and some frogs and, uh, well, I hope you like eating them, you know, because that's it. You shoot it, you eat it, you know. He went out and he practiced. Well, I bought that slingshot and I tried to shoot. I gave up. I couldn't hit. I couldn't get even near the squirrels. It might have helped that I didn't have any acorns because acorns probably fly straighter. I was taking little old pieces of dried stick and I'd break off a piece about an inch long and shoot it. And you know, a piece of dried stick doesn't fly straight. So I was just trying to like to hit something. So the squirrels say, "Hey, I don't, this is not a good place to be eating. There's stuff flying through the air." David practiced. And isn't it a good thing that he practiced? Because God used his skill set to have his purpose in life changed. And his purpose in life went from being a shepherd to being the king over Israel. Not an easy road. Matthew. Matthew's life was changed. Not me. Matthew was a tax collector uh, in, in Roman time. He knew money, he knew finances, and he took care of all those things. Matthew's life was changed. Matthew went from doing something that was probably not very liked as well to following Jesus. Another one that Jesus went up to and said, follow me. And so his purpose, he was probably financially set. I mean, if he, took care, if he took care of money, he probably was well set. But he collected money for Rome and the Jewish people. They probably didn't like him. Matter of fact, the, the Pharisees of his time got on to Jesus and, the, and they said that he eats with sinners and tax collectors. Yeah. So they looked at tax collectors like they were bad. And here Jesus has one in his inner circle. But you know what? When Jesus died, Matthew didn't go back to being a tax collector. Man. Matthew shared Jesus. Yeah. And he became an author. Yeah. And he wrote a book. And that book today is called <laughs> The Gospel of Matthew. So he's, his life purpose was changed. Luke. Luke's the last one I'm going to cover because I'm running out of time. Luke. Luke in the Bible is called a physician. And a physician, when it says Luke, turn the camera, record off and on, edit. No, turn, turn the red button on and off. There you go. You're good to go. Luke. Luke was a physician in the Bible. Now, he took care of people. And out of all the professions that you think about, doctors, 
they 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 make pretty good money. They do good. They do good. You know. <laughs> George knows. His dad was a doctor. You know, my grandson said to me the other day, he goes, uh, I, th I think I want to be a doctor. I think that's a noble thing. To help people, to be a doctor, that is, that is a noble thing. And you'll do okay. Because one thing's for sure in this life. Your job will never be in jeopardy. Because there's always somebody who needs a doctor. It was your doctor who we went to the, ta the time that Stephen <laughs> got a seat in his ear. Stuck a green pea, a hard green bean in his ear. <laughs> like you could see it with a flashlight in his ear. What do you do? You can't poke it out. It's hard. You can't blow it out either. You can't pull it out. You can't blow it out. And, 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 and we went to see your dad. And he's like, just leave it alone over time. Don't worry about it. It'll come out. I think Curtis stuck a Lego in his nose or something. Snorted like a little Lego. And it's like, so one thing's for sure. Doctors are always going to be needed. But you see, Luke, Luke had his purpose in life changed. And Luke, just like Matthew, became an author. And Luke gave us the, the, the book of Luke and the book of Acts and Luke had a totally different perspective of the way that he was going to write about the miracles of Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, because Luke was a doctor. Now, if you're traveling like Paul, and Luke traveled probably with Paul, and there were miracles, and you had a doctor with you, that would be kind of like Benny Hinn or Jimmy Swagger having a doctor on stage to come up and say, Yes, this person is legitimately sick. Benny Hinn would pray for them. They would be healed, and the doctor would be, yep, they're now healed. And, and God had a whole new calling for Luke. Now here's, here's my first question. What's God's purpose for you? What is God's purpose for you? Could you have a new new purpose in life? Absolutely. This is what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11 ESV. It says, for I know the plans I have for you. This is God talking. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare, and that doesn't mean welfare like we think we know what welfare, but that means that you're going to fare well, and not for evil. To give you a future... And hope. Oh, Praise God. God has plans for you. Amen. And it's one where you're going to fare well, not evil. Mm -hmm. He has plans for you in the future. He has plans for you to have a hope. Amen. Can you have a new purpose in life? Yes. Amen. How would you find out? How would you find out what God's plan is for you? How about you just ask? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty simple. You bow your head and say, God, what would you like me to do in life? What is it that you want me to do? And, and, and trust me, if he calls you to do something mm -hmm. and you do it, you will be blessed. Amen. Mm -hmm. But be careful about that question. Because if you ask that question and God says, this is what I want you to do. And then you say, like Jonah, I don't want to go there. Lord, send me wherever you want to go visit the Ninevites. Send me anywhere but the Ninevites. Go visit the Ninevites. I'm not going to the Ninevites. Go visit the Ninevites. I'm going to, okay, I'm going. I'm going on, I'm going. I'm getting on a boat. But my boat is going to take me as far away from where the Ninevites are as possible. Go to the Ninevites. I'm on the boat. I'm on the boat. And as he's on the boat, guess what happened? The storm came. And they threw him off the boat. And it says a great fish came and swallowed him. And seaweed was all wrapped around him. 
And he was in that belly of the whale, is what is the what, what we call it today, that great fish, that whale. And, and people say that's impossible. He couldn't. You can't be swallowed by a fish. Yeah, there's there's recently been a documentation of somebody who got swallowed. Oh, thank you. Um, and there was yes. there's a documentation of somebody who's who got swallowed by a shark, like a great white shark. And trust me, there might have been some bigger sharks than back then than there are now, because there's many species that are extinct. They weren't extinct back then. Mm -hmm. But what can happen if you ask God what he wants you to do and then you decide you don't want to do it? Yeah. Well, you might end up in a storm, in drowning in the, in the sea, swallowed up by something that could kill you until you finally turn back to the Lord and then you just might end up being puked up on shore somewhere. <laughs> you know? Read the book of Jonah. It's only four chapters. It's great. God has a plan for you. Yeah. What is your calling? That was just what we we're talking about. What is your calling? How do you know? How do you know that you have a calling? Well, everybody has some kind of calling. Everybody has something that they that God created them to do. This is what it says in Romans 8:28. And we know that for those who love God, that all things, what does it say? Work together. Together. I, I want you, if if you can, underline that word together for good. For, good. Yeah. for those who are called. called according to his purpose. purpose. At first, when I said, What is your calling? I don't know if I'm called. I don't know if I want to be called. Not after that story of Jonah. <laughs> you know? Maybe I don't. You're called. But you do want this all things work together for the good, don't you? Don't you want this verse in your life? Amen. Well, there is a stipulation. It says for everyone. No. It says for those who are called. You want everything to work together for the good? Then find out what God's calling on your life is. Amen. Ask God what his calling on his life is. And then all things will work together for the good, it doesn't say all things are good. All things that happen are good. That's not what it says. It just says all things work together for the good. Things that, things that are good, things that are bad, things that are sorrowful, things that are happy, things that seem like they're tribulation in your life and problems. When you put all those things together in your life, then it's going to work out for the good if you're called. Well, God has called you. Yeah. Jesus came and knocked on the door of your heart. Amen. In Revelation 3.20 it says that behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will fellowship with him, sup. says sup with him, and he with me. That Jesus has come and yeah. he has knocked on your heart. And it says, and if he hears my voice, means that Jesus not only knocked on your heart but he also said hello it's me Jesus and how do I know that because it says if any man hears my voice so obviously he knocked and then he spoke he speaks to your heart when he comes knocking on your heart that is him coming and guess who's calling on you Jesus Amen. what can we all do? Well, this, this is pretty simple. This is what we can do. One, you, you, you can acknowledge he's knocking. Two, it says, if any man hear my voice and open the door. This is what it is. When you open the door, Jesus said this to the apostles. And he says this to every Christian. Everyone who has opened the door, this is what it says. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jesus said, go out and share me. Tell people what I have done in your life. Invite people to church. Smile at people. Encourage people. Love people. Help people. 
Tell people about my hope. Tell people about what I did. Encourage them to read my word. That is called the Great Commission. Mm -hmm. And that is to all of us. Amen. What can we do? We can share Jesus. How can you share Jesus? How, however you share Jesus. Just share Jesus. He will never let you down. Amen. Go out and share, and I can promise you this. He won't let you down. When you share Jesus, you're going to see something happen. And God will take care of you. This is Philippians 1 6 says, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, just go out and share the gospel. Just go out and tell people about Jesus. Amen. Just go out. I don't care if you just go tell people Jesus loves you. You don't know if that person might need it to, to hear that that day. You say, well, that's kind of corny. Jesus loves you. Yeah, or I nerdy, you know. That, you know uh, that's kind of goofy sounding. You don't know if that person that morning was feeling suicidal because they didn't feel loved. Yeah. Because they felt like no one loved them. Nobody gives me anything but hurt in my life. Yeah. All they do is I can't be accepted by anybody. I just want to know that somebody loves you. And here comes your goofy self. Hey, Jesus loves you. That's like a rock between the eyes. That's an answer to somebody's prayer. And you don't, you don't know that. They might have woke up that morning and said, God doesn't love me. Jesus loves you. Amen. Jesus loves you. Those that seek the Lord find purpose. Maybe you feel like your life doesn't have purpose. Maybe you, you feel, I'm too old. You're never too old to start serving God. Amen. You're never, you never got too much to do to put Jesus first in your life. But this is, this is a fact. There's going to come a day when you die. And when you die, you will stand before God. And He's not going to say, well, I'm going to let you in because you went to church every day. Or you went to church every week. Mm -hmm. Or you gave in the offering. Right. Or you, oh, you, you were a faithful tithe payer, so I'm letting you in. Mm -hmm. Oh, you gave, you, gave, you gave clothes to people. You gave food to people. You visited people who were sick. You went to the hospitals. You you gave school supplies to, to, to kids. You you worked volunteer. You cleaned the church. I'm going to let you in. That's not how it worked. It's about your relationship with Jesus. And when you ask Jesus into your heart, He will give you a new purpose in life. You will have a new goal. A new hope, a new assurance, a new job that supersedes your job that you got. Praise You'll know that you have now been accepted into the family Hallelujah. of God. Thank you. Lord. And that the Father that we serve owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Hallelujah. You'll have something that the world will never understand. Your friends who don't know Jesus won't get it. No. They won't understand how you, how did you fall for that Jesus stuff? Huh. I am so happy that I fell for that Jesus Amen. stuff. I am so happy that I asked the Lord into my life. Yeah. I am so happy that He has given me a new purpose. Yeah. When I look back at my life and I would have said, if I had become an animator for Disney, I could say, look at this great movie that I did. I, I was one of a hundred people who, who drew this painting of 250 brother bears. <laughs> and, and look, if, if you freeze it, when you look at the 250 animators, you just might be able to find my name. 
No, I would rather look back at my life and say, no, you reached people and you gave them hope. Yeah. And you encouraged them. And you befriended people. And, and you loved on people. Amen. And most importantly, you pointed people to God. Yeah. And to Jesus. And to relationship with me. And one day when I walk into heaven, maybe I'm going to get a crown. That's what it talks about, a crown. Mm -hmm. That says, here, here it is. And, and, and if, if my crown is based on how many people that I have led to the Lord, some people, they may have a pretty big crown. Mm -hmm. Or they might have a lot of jewels in their crown. Feathers. But if I have just one, I'm not going to say, I'm a failure. No, you saved one person's life. That's right. Amen. Maybe if you save two. That's a good enough goal in life. I'd love to say, God's going to call you to save the world. But you know what? If in your life, you can just reach two people, you can just disciple two people, you can just root and ground two people in God's Word, then guess what you've done? You've done good. Yeah. And you have accomplished greatness Amen. because you doubled it. Some people triple it, quadruple it, hundred times it. But just make it your goal in life. To start with, reach two. Reach two people. Maybe this year, reach two people. Maybe. But that is a purpose worth living for. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate your online giving. You can give online. There's a link below. Supporting us in ministry is, is crucial, and we thank you for, for your giving here, and we thank you for your online giving. It is a great blessing for us to be responsible with your giving to spreading the good news of God's love. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. I pray, Lord, that you would just help us to be focused on you. Let your presence and your spirit be our guide in life, that we might live according to your word. Amen. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that if there is anyone in here online or here that has not asked Jesus into their life and has not opened that door, Father, that you would knock once more, knock once more in their life, speak once more to them and say, it's me. Jesus, Amen. and let them this time open the door. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Open the door to Jesus. You won't regret it. Yeah. See you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m.